Hello, my name is Nicholas Wiley, and today we're going to be deriving an expression for the fanning friction factor. So the first thing that we should talk about is the system that we have on the left. What we have is we have a controlled amount of volume of a um, cylinder filled with liquid inside of a larger tube. Um, and this control, control volume, like I just said, is going to be a smaller part concentric to a larger cylinder around. What we're going to be looking at is the change in altitude and thus potential energy of our system and trying to create some sort of force balance to lead us to this fanning friction factor. Now when talking, oh, also important to note, is that we're going to have a Newtonian fluid that is going to be at steady state. And since we know that we're at steady state, we know that from Newton's second law, we have the net forces in our system, it's going to be equal to the mass times acceleration. This is very basic, but this is going to be equal to zero. Now why do we know that that's equal to zero? Well, we know what the acceleration is, which is the differential change in velocity with respect to time. And this is going to be equal to zero because we know that any, um, any derivative with respect to time um, for steady state is going to be equal to zero. Okay. Now that we have all this cleared out of the way, let's talk about the, pre the forces acting upon our system. Now the first thing we have acting upon our system is we have pressure acting. That's a good one to start with. What we have is we have the atmosphere up here acting upon our system. And we have the atmospheric pressure down here acting upon our system. Now what I'm going to tell you is that this net is going to be equal to zero. And you'll be asked, well, why? How does that make sense? You're going from higher potential to lower potential. You'd expect some pressure change. But no, what we can talk about is the um, equation for static fluids. It's going to be the differential change in pressure with the differential or the change in our altitude. It's going to be equal to rho A or G, whatever you prefer. Now, since we have moving fluid, obviously this is not going to be applicable. So we, we will just completely disregard that. And another thing that we know um, is we know the um, continuation equation, which is going to be that the volumetric flow rate is going to be equal to the um, volume multiplied by the area. Coming over here, we see that the areas are going to be equal to each other. This is going to stay constant. This will stay constant. This will all stay constant. So, since we have no differential change in pressure, what do we have in this system? Let's do a little erasing. Well, I can tell you the first thing that we do have, which is the liquid. Liquid all has gravitational force, so we can create a, that can be our first force, and, I, and that's going to be acting upon our system. So we know that the force of gravity for our fluid is going to be equal to the density of our fluid multiplied by the volume of our fluid, multiplied by the gravitational constant of our fluid. Now, what is this volume going to be? So let's make a little representation of our cylinder, or one that is inside the fixed or um, controlled volume. When looking at this, we know that we need to find the area of the cylinder and find the entire area as it goes down. So the area of this, of our circle on top, is going to be, I'll write this out, it's going to be, oops, not two, pi r squared, and then what are we going to do with the rest? Well, we have to go down and down and down with all of these wheel of cylinders, which is going to be r delta z. So our expression for the volume is going to be pi r squared delta z. So the change in altitude multiplied by the area of our circle, and then as we just take pieces and pieces and pieces and go downwards until we hit the bottom. Okay, we have to multiply that by g. Okay, so now that we're looking at this system, what are some other forces that we are going to have to have? We cannot just have the force of gravity going downwards. That doesn't make any sense. Well, what we also have in addition is going to be the, my little cylinder, we're going to have is number one, frictional heating, which in return, is well, which is caused by the viscosity of the fluid. What we're going to have eventually is the right side of the Bernoulli's equation, the Bernoulli's equation, which talks about frictional heating. In the last few videos, we have completely disregarded that, but in this video, we are going to be talking about this, and this is going to help us get to our fanning friction factor. Now, how is this going to help us get there? Well, one thing that we should note about this velocity profile is that as you are at this inner, the, in, the most inner part of our cylinder, and as you move out, this velocity out here is going to be slightly smaller. Now, why is that? Because as you move out with radius, there is going to be a decrease in velocity. 
So what is make, what is the cause of that um, decrease in velocity? It's actually going to be shear stress, shear force. Which is denoted as tau. And for Newtonian fluid, this is going to be equal to sigma multiplied by mu, which is going to be our shear heat, which is going to be equal to dV times our T, and then our viscosity of our fluid. And that's going to, what's going to be producing that frictional heating. That's going to be producing the shear, the shear force upon our system. Now, when looking at this, as I've said, the velocity within the cylinder on the inner surface is going to be higher than the velocity on the outer surface. This is due to the um, higher radius as you go outwards. As you go outwards, the velocity is going to decrease. But it's also because we are going to have some force acting upwards, which is going to be our shear force is going to be acting upwards. Okay, so what does that mean for us? That means that when we're doing our force balance, so I will add down here, we're going to have our total net forces. And as I've said, this is going to be equal to zero. What we'll have is we'll keep our, this expression right here, which is our um, gravitational force. Multiplied by g. And what we need to do is we need to add those two together because these are the two most important um, things that we are going to have within our system. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our shear stress. Now this is going to be in units of newtons per meter squared. Since force is in newtons, what we need to do is we need to multiply by some sort of area. Now for this case, what area are we going to be talking about? Also, I just realized I made a big mistake over here. It's not dV over dt. It's going to be the differential change of volume with respect to the change in radius. Um, another thing I might not have included is that um, we're talking about shearing that is acting along a surface. Rather than our pressure forces, which are acting perpendicular, shear force is going to be acting along the surface, which is why we've drawn it as so. OK. So we know that this is newton meters squared. We know that it's acting along this surface, along the surface of the cylinder. Knowing that, we know that we are going to be acting, well, I guess I just said that, along the surface of the cylinder, meaning that we need to be talking about the outside. When we're talking about the outside, the number one thing we should think of is the circumference, which is going to be 2 pi r. And then in addition, we're talking about it going around and around the entire thing, rings and around, rings around and around and around until we go from our position 1 altitude all the way down to the bottom. So this is just going to be 2 pi r delta z. So we can multiply that by 2 pi r delta z. OK. And now I'm actually going to do a little bit of cleaning, um, and then we're going to move forward. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be substituting in for this um, for tau right here, for our variable, um, we're going to be substituting in an expression. Now what we're going to do is we're going to integrate, and we are going to try and move along with this. So I'll see you in a second. All right, so hello everyone. We're back. I cleaned up a little bit, and we're going to get ready to do a couple integrations and substitutions. So what we, what we, where we left off is what we had was this expression. Now one thing I need to note is that we can re-express this tau, this shear, um, shear stress, shear force, in terms of something else. We said that this. J said that tau is going to be equal to our shear rate multiplied by our viscosity of our fluid, but we, can, we know that our shear rate can be written as the differential change in velocity over the differential change in radius. What we can do is we can substitute this in. Now what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and put all this together in one step real quick. What we're going to do is we are going to have dv over dr is going to be equal to I'm actually just going to put all of this in the denominator, which is this. And then we're also going to have sigma down here. Not sigma, we're going to have our viscosity down here. And up top, we're going to have 2 pi r squared delta z g. Now, when we cancel some of these things out, let's see, where is it? Delta z, the change in altitude rid of one of the r's, get rid of pi. So we're going to be left with is rho g r over 2 meter. 
I think that's correct. It's a little messy, but now what we're going to do is we're actually going to take some hair glue, so it's like the same as if I can do it properly. Now, when looking at this, we have all of these are going to be constants, and now we're going we're not going to take any bounds for this. We're simply just going to integrate. Um, what do you call that? Um, boundless. I forget. I forget exactly what the name is, but we're just going to integrate it. That's not the big part of this function. What you're left with is v is going to be equal to rho g over 2u, and that becomes r squared, so this will become 4, 4 mu r squared plus c. That's what we're going to be left with, because we're doing a boundless integral. Now, when we're looking at this right here, what we need to do is we need to figure out what that constant is. Now, how are we going to do that? Real quick, let's just draw a cylinder. Not the greatest at drawing circles or cylinders. That's terrible, though. Oh, this is just going to have to work for now. And to find this constant, what we can do is we can bring up something that I was going to bring up earlier, which is going to be the no slip boundary condition. Basically, what that says is that the velocity of a fluid at a surface is equal to the velocity of the surface. Now, what does that mean for us? It means if we're at this point right here, um, the velocity of the liquid right here, the velocity is going to be equal to the velocity of the surface. So since this isn't moving, that means that the velocity is going to be equal to zero at this big radius r, the total radius of our pipe. So what we can do is we can actually substitute these values in, and this is going to give us our constant value. So what I'll do is I'll say that v is going to be equal to 0 equals rho g over 4 mu. And what are we going to do? We'll put in big R squared plus c. So if we look at that, simply, all we have to do is flip that to the other side. Am I missing a negative? I am missing a negative. So when we flip all that over, this becomes negative. Easy. 0 equals negative. So what this is going to become is c is going to be positive um, rho g. You'll see it. This value right here. All we're going to do is we're going to put in a large r, and it's going to be added on. Rho over 4 mu big r squared. So what can we do with this? We can actually rewrite this. We can do our velocity is going to be equal to rho g over 4 mu multiplied by big R squared minus little r squared. Okay, and now we're really moving along with things. So I'll be back in a second. Now that we have all of this set up, we have our velocity profile with respect to radius, what we need to do is we need to account for this changing area as we go out radially outwards. So how are we going to do that? Well, what we can do is we can use something that we've already used in the past, which is going to be that our flow rate is going to be equal to V times our area. We saw this with the continuity equation, though this is not involving the continuity equation. This is something that we know. The flow rate is going to be equal to the velocity times the area, with this, which this velocity is in respect to r. So what we can do is we can actually figure out what this, this is going to be if we use an integral and we, um, we use the differential area. So what this is going to become is the integral of v dA. Now what is our differential area going to be? We talked about this in the past, but say we have some cylinder like this, or just some circle, I guess you could say circle. What we're going to have is we're going to have this ring right here. What we're going to have is we're going to have some thickness dr that's going to be the dr is going to be the thickness of our band that we have. And how are we going to, what's going to be the other part of that that we're going to use? We need to use the circumference of that band and then expand outwards until we've gone through the entire area. So this is going to be 2 pi r. Because again, that is going to be our, um, that is going to be our circumference, which we are going to take bands of, which are with our thickness dr, until we cover that entire area. So this is going to become v times 2 pi r dr. Now in addition to that, we need to plug in this v value and we also can pull out that 2 pi value. So I'm going to do that now. Q is going to be equal to, I think I'll just write this outside. 
2 pi, and then we're going to take some of this v to the terms out, so we have rho d over 4 mu. I believe that that looks right, so rho d 4 mu, times d 4 mu, for this term right here, and we're also going to have the integral of r multiplied by r squared minus r squared dr. So, okay, all we did was plug this in, and I'm going to do some quick math. This is going to become rho dg over 2 mu, pi rho g over 2 mu, and then we're going to take the integral of r multiplied by r squared, which is simply going to become minus r cubed, big r squared, little r, minus r cubed, d r. Now what are our bounds of integration going to be for this? We're looking at this right here, we're going to see that the bounds, well, I should have left this out. When looking at this system that we have, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be going from the center all the way out to our big radius r. Okay, just pause there, we have zero right there. And then I think we're all set up to integrate. Now, as you can tell, I've been struggling with my integration, so I'm quickly just going to write this, clean it up, and then we can progress through. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back real quick. I'm sorry about a lot of cuts today, but there's been a lot of integration and a lot of math, and the focus is more conceptually in this class, not as much on the integrals. So we have what we've done right here is we have simply taken that integral that we have found earlier, which ended up being r to the fourth over two minus r to the fourth over four after doing some simple integration. And then what this is going to be equal, if you do a half minus a fourth, you're going to get a fourth. So plugging this in, we can move this four down here. So this is going to become eight. And we're left with r to the fourth. Now something we're going to do that's going to help us, um, just because the um, expression that we're going to be looking into, Bernoulli's principle, the frictional heating factor, is going to be in terms of diameter. What we're going to do is we're going to express this r as d over 2 to the fourth. I guess we could keep this. Well, yeah, let's just, we'll figure that out as we go. So what is 2 to the fourth? I believe that we're going to be at 128 with that. 128. Yes, we're going to be at 128 with this because we were. Times 1 over 4. Plus 2 over 4. Yes, okay, so that makes sense. So this is going to be 128 mu, and then what we're going to have is d to the fourth on that top. Okay, so now that we're at this point, what are we going to do with this information? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another break real quick, and I'm going to set up what we know, which is going to include the frictional heating factor, which is going to be in relation with Bernoulli's principle, and we are going to just drive it to the end from there. So I'll be right back. All right, everyone, so I'm back. What I've done in the brief break, I've actually um, written down the term that we have for our volumetric flow rate and put it in terms of G, which you're going to see why um, it's going to become important in a second. And then what I've also done is I've, I've written out Bernoulli's equation, and I've also included the um, frictional heating factor, or the, the frictional heat, and then we have Fanning's uh, friction factor in this equation, which is what we're going to be solving for the whole point of this video. So the reason I did this was just for ease of access. Um, just rewrote this, and just so I could talk about this and get through it. Um, we only have a few steps left, so just hang with me. So the first thing we need to talk about is Bernoulli's equation, what we have right here, and what we can get rid of, and things that we can substitute in. So clearly what we're going to be doing is we're going to be substituting in this g down here, but before that, what we're going to do is we're actually going to get rid of this term right here. Now, why is that? As we talked about earlier, the there is no pressure difference um, from here to here. Uh, we made that clear. Um, we used a couple of different relationships. This is something I stated previously, so you can just rewind the video. So this is we're going to completely not think about that. That is not going to be a part of our calculation. In addition, because the areas were the same as we saw with the um, continuation equation. We saw that since there was no change in area, there was no change in velocity, and thus this term can be gotten rid of. So this blue stays true to me. I've been having some marker issues all day. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to start talking about this down here, and I'm going to start moving stuff around to get us ready for the final, final stretch. So when looking at this, at this altitude change, when we're talking about from position two to position one, 
This is going to be the negative length of our pipe. So usually the length of pipe is this way, but we're talking about the negative length filling up this way um, from position two to position one, since this is the delta z. So we're actually going to denote this as is the negative length of our pipe. Okay, so now what we can do is we can just plug and chug. What I'll do is I'll make both of those positive, and then I will write this out. So we have 1.28 mu times q over d to the fourth rho pi. It's going to be equal to 4 times our standing friction factor times the length. This is supposed to be big L, so I'll put it in here. Then we have d squared over 2. And then we have a diameter down here. Now that's the reason that we switched everything to diameter earlier. Um, it's just for ease when talking about this specifically. Okay, so I can get rid of this. Get rid of this to give us some room. Now all it is is just going to be a game of cancellations. We're trying to get f to equal to the other side, so let's just do our quick um, cancellation. So what we're going to see is that this is going to be gone. This is going to be d cubed. Okay, and then what we're going to be left with over here, uh, this is going to be 2. So 2, 4 becomes 2. <laughs> what we're going to do, so we're going to divide this by 2. This is going to become 64. So we have 64, and then we're left with F and L, which actually, there's supposed to be an L here because it was G times negative L equals negative friction factor. So that's just something I forgot. Um, so these are actually going to cancel out. That's the whole point of saying that. There was an L here, I just forgot to include it. And then we're left with a V squared, which is going to end up in the denominator. Okay, so looking at this, we do have an expression for the fanning friction factor, but what we can do is take this a step further. Now, what do we know about the volumetric flow rate? That is that it's equal to the velocity multiplied by the area. For us, what is the area going to be equal to? If we're talking in terms of diameter, it's going to be pi times our diameter squared over four. So what we can do is we can actually plug this in. Real quick, I'm gonna cancel out this V. So we're left with one V, this D squared. I'm gonna turn this into one singular V. The pi's will cancel. And the four will turn this into 16. And I think that's it. I'll get rid of the Q then. So what we're going to be left with is 16 mu over V D rho is equal to our fanning friction factor. Now isn't this awesome? Well, there's actually one more thing that we can do with this, which I actually found this very interesting, is we can relate this to the Reynolds number because the Reynolds number is going to be equal to the velocity multiplied by the um, diameter multiplied by rho over mu. So what does that mean for us? It means that this is going to be equal to, I'm actually going to erase the box, because this is a this is even cooler, I think, is the fact that we did all of this and it leads up to the Reynolds number. So this is going to be equal to 16 over the Reynolds number, because the inverse of the Reynolds number is going to be mu, of our velocity multiplied by the diam diameter multiplied by rho. So that is going to do it for us. This one was a little bit tricky. Um, this one conceptually challenged me, but once I got through all the concepts and the other understanding, I think that it all makes sense, and I'm really glad that it has such a cool answer for this, is that it's in terms of the Reynolds number, something that we've been talking about for a while now. So I thank you for watching. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know, and have a good day.